In this video, I want to show the draft tracker feature of Fantasy Draft Assistant. It is very easy to use, but at first glance, it is a little confusing because it doesn't look like your typical Windows application. So let's get right to it. So I've started a CBS Sports mock draft, and here's the draft room. And you will see it looks like your typical draft. Uh, we have it's waiting. We're still uh, just inside four minutes before the draft starts. And you can see the players that are available. And there's a chat room and a round. But this doesn't exactly show me as much information as I'd want at once. And it uses the CBS rankings, which are okay. And, of course, you could set your own rankings. But if you use CBS and Yahoo and ESPN, you'd have to set your ranking on each of the uh, um, draft applications. So what Fantasy Draft Assistant allows you to do is to have your own ranking and to use its draft tracker to provide all the information you need. So I will just pull up the default rankings and I will go ahead and launch the draft tracker. So the first thing you see in draft tracker is the draft options. So it asks us how many teams there are, what your pick is, how many rounds there are, and how many starters are at each position, things like that. So in this draft, I have the number five pick, so I'll go ahead and launch the draft tracker. Now what you see uh, at the start, the forms launch on top of the draft uh, window, of the CBS window, and they kind of launch stacked up. Uh, we'll talk about that more in just a second. So. Uh, well, what happens is these windows will stay on top of the CBS window, the draft window, so that I can use them at the same time and not have to be flipping back and forth. You don't have to have two uh, actual monitors to use the draft tracker. You can use it at the exact same time you're using the web-based uh, draft application. Uh, but what you will notice if I go back over to Word, say, the draft tracker is still on top. Well, that's a little confusing, but it's easy enough to deal with because here in the draft tracker toolbar, there's a button to hide all the draft tracker forms. And you'll see, uh, I can now see my screen again as if I need to flip before the draft or during the draft to email or something. You can just hide the forms, use your application. And then when you're ready to go back to your draft, you simply have to hit the restore button to get your forms back exactly like they were. And there's also a show all button here if you want to see all the draft tracker forms. Now, as I said, when they first launched, they kind of stacked up on top of each other. And it'll do that the initial time you launch, but by default, it will remember where you've positioned your forms so that you only have to position them once if you're, re if you're using the same kind of draft and it will remember. And so you can see I can position, what I will usually do is position the forms to some either wasted space on the draft page or, um, you know, if there's a space I'm not going to use much so that I can see the draft tracker tool. So the first tool is the toolbar. It will, as you see, it will stay visible at all times. Uh, you can't hide it. You can exit the draft tracker by clicking this button. Um, and you can use it to show and hide all the other forms. That's these first five buttons. So there's currently five uh, draft tracker tools. Uh, the first one here you can see is the status, and I can hide it or show it. Uh, this one I recommend you keep open at all times because it's going to show you how the, where the actual draft is, what the pick is, how many picks are remaining, how many until you pick, and allow you to easily keep track versus the... Uh, web-based draft versus your draft to be sure you keep them in sync. Uh, the next window is the available players. This is using your player rankings uh, and you can see this is the default rankings and it allows you to filter your rankings by position. So if you want to just see you know which running backs are available or you can go back to all positions. And to draft a player you would simply click their name in this list and they would get drafted. So when the draft starts, as you can see it just actually did, uh, what you want to do is follow along with the draft and click off the players as they're chosen. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, 
the next screen is actually your alternate way to draft players. It's called the search screen. And it's similar. It still uses your player rankings. Only now you can search for a certain, you know, player name or team name if you're not, if you can't remember the exact name or if you're having trouble locating them in your list. So, for example, if I want to find the Manning brothers here, you can see there's Peyton and Eli as well as Mario Manningham. I've just typed the first part of their name. And you can either double click their name here or uh, click their name and then click the button to draft them there. So it's pretty simple. And you can see the draft got started. So all I need to do is just click that Chris Johnson was drafted. And now you can see the status is updated to reflect along with how the draft is progressing. Uh, the other thing about the draft tracker, the search tool, is if a player is drafted that you did not have ranked, you can simply use the search tool to select their position put in their name and their team and you can either uh, double click the players unranked or the draft unranked player button and that will draft that player that was not in your list and you'll need to do this sometimes if there was either a player you didn't think about or somebody drafts a nonsense player basically you can use that so that your draft doesn't get out of sync with the actual draft um, so now back to our draft, you can see that Adrian Peterson was just chosen, so we'll select him off, just to kind of keep in track here. And you can see I can still use, I can hide the search screen. Um, you can hide each form just by clicking the X or by clicking the relative button up here. You can also, if you want to just get it out of the way, you can double click on the header and it will actually roll up that form so that it's out of the way. And then I can still use the, the CBS or your draft features underneath and be able to read them. I can still participate in the chat if I want. Um, things like that. So back to tools. We still have two more tools. The one uh, is the your picks screen which by default will show a blank for each position that's a starter. And what this will allow you to do is easily see what positions you need to fill and what teams you've selected from and their bye weeks so that you can track. Uh, and instantly I'm now on the clock, so we'll go back to the draft here. We'll see that Maurice Jones Drew was selected and that Ray Rice was selected. So now it's my pick, and ba just based on my rankings, I would most likely pick Michael Turner next. So I could click on the CBS form and I can click draft Michael Turner and I can click here to draft Michael Turner in the fantasy draft assistant draft tracker. So now you can see the my pick screen was updated. Let me say this here a bit and you can see it shows that I drafted Michael Turner and he has a buy in week eight. Uh, and the last fantasy draft assistant tool is the statistics tool and what this will show you is for each team in the draft and each position how many players at each position have been drafted so you can see every team thus far has taken a running back and the total is five running backs so you can use that to kind of um, see the runs on players you can also use it to identify you know when players before teams before or after you what players they might select and you can also, as you can see, highlight uh, mouse over a certain row and you'll see a little pop up here that shows me which players that team selected. I picked Michael Turner, Ray Rice, Maurice Jones Drew, etc. The other thing that will happen is once a team's starters have been filled, you will see that the row will be highlighted that that position has been filled, their starters have been filled, so that you, that'll also help you know when they might go for a backup or when they might go for a different position. So you can see Frank Gore was just selected, so we'll go to our available picks and we'll select Frank Gore. And uh, the other thing that's important to note is occasionally you will accidentally click a player that wasn't actually selected. Well, it's very easy to undo that. You just click the undo button on the toolbar and it will undo that previous pick so that you can again keep the draft tracker in sync with the ongoing draft. 
So you can see in the draft, Aaron Rodgers was just selected. And so just to show, I will draft Aaron Rodgers. And now we can see in the statistics form that indeed Team 7 now has their quarterback. And so that position is highlighted. And again, mousing over, I can see that it's Aaron Rodgers. So you can see these tools can be very helpful. Again, you can use some or all of them. I recommend you use the statistics form open at all times. You can choose between uh, the available players in the search screen uh, or swap between them when you're making picks. What I usually do is just pick some of the tools, position them uh, where they're comfortable, and then use the other tools as I need to see them. So we hope this has been a helpful demonstration. If you need more information, please visit fantasydraftassistant.com. Thanks.